There have been some major changes announced for Marvel Strike Force. So is Marvel Strike Force going to be better than ever or are these changes a little too late? I'm discussing that all with my brother Mobile Gamer along with our roster review. Much overdue roster review. And if you're ready for it, brother Mobile Gamer, let him know what to do. Let's go! Alley flying. Hello, hello, hello. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I'm Valley Flying. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we are talking all about the changes that were announced, part of this Marvel's Players Voice movement, and all the good they've been doing. Some of the changes that Marvel Strike Force has announced recently. Are this, is this going to make the game better than ever, or are these changes too late? If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button as we discuss it with my brother, Mobile Gamer. How are you, my friend? There you are. There How I have am. you been? Both of us are back from vacation. Yes. How are you enjoying Marvel Strike Force after a little bit of a break from the game? Uh, the game is going well. I, I mean, I, I, I'm i pretty optimistic about the direction. I, I think the question is, is it too little, too late? Has the damage yes. already been done? But I... I you know, what if they they attempted these changes, let's say, a year ago or Ooh. two years ago? And uh, that, is, that is some good questions that we're going to answer in yeah. just a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to cut you off, but I, do, I don't, I don't want to say I don't want to ruin our uh, your response there for this. But uh, how was how was your trip? Are you enjoying the game now more that you're back or or is it or is it uh, just the same or is it or is it less? All right, so uh, my my trip was was good. I mean, how how is vacation a bad thing? I got sick a couple of days on the trip, oh, no. so oh, it, no. it, it was it was it wasn't a perfect trip, but overall it was absolutely amazing. And I was gone for a week, which I feel like is the perfect amount of time. I know I you so were too. gone. You were gone for, for like three, three weeks. weeks. So I, I don't know <laughs> if I could do that. Three weeks is a long long time to be well, to be gone. I intended to make videos. I brought my computer, all that stuff, but. Man, the Wi-Fi was so slow. Normally, it takes me like five minutes to upload a video. It took me two hours to upload a very short video. I was like, oh, this this is going to be crazy. And just time. But we had fun. But we are back. We're discussing Marvel Strike Force. And you know what we have not done in a while? Oof. Roster review. We have not done a roster, review. Just anything, a roster right? review. All right. Before we get to this roster review and discussing, is Marvel Strike Force better than ever? Let me tell you about this other game that I've been playing. All right. If you're looking for fast-paced action on your mobile device, I want to tell you about Mac Arena. Now, they're not sponsoring this video, but I'm really having a blast playing this, so I wanted to mention it to you again. It is a fun third-person shooter game, and if you're into third-person shooters, this might be the best one available to you on your mobile device and your PC. Now, you build and customize your mech. You take them into battle against players around the world, and what I really love is all about the tactics and strategy instead of just paying your way to the top. If you want a bunch of free goodies, use the link in the description, or scan the QR code from the screen. So yes, guys, check out Mech Arena if you want to check a little different flavor than Marvel Strike. It's very, very different. And if you want to check out my beginner's guide, make sure you check out the video up there. But our roster, this is where I've been. Now you have grown significantly since the last time we did this. I'm at 37 million TCP. Where, how does, well, I know we're gonna go check out your roster, but man, how big is the gap between our rosters now? Uh, I'm at, 45 million Ooh, right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. I did get a war MVP. I'm not sure how that happened. But, wow. Um, I, I did get one of those. This is my roster. What I'm working on right now is to get the ISO 8 5 on these characters. I did get the, the first section, the dark hold section, and the, and the unlimited X Men section. Working in the gamma section now, so I could get a few more stars, a few more red stars, or apocalypse. Uh, but that is where my baby apocalypse is right now. I'm looking, working on the Isle of the Ice Weight 5 and pretty much my raid teams right now. So, Val, right. a lot of my rebirth, a lot of my uh, invaders. And when it gets Monday, Tuesday, and I'm playing that Cosmic Crucible, if a team just isn't working and I need more power, I, I just start to work on some Cosmic Crucible characters. But that's where I've been I've been uh, working with right now. Is there any specific teams that you want to see where I've built or anything like that? Uh, well, I got to say that a lot of people ask me, are you working on getting Dark Dimension 6 and, and Super Scroll? And I was like, man, I got to focus on raid teams <laughs> and I got to focus on getting a big boy apocalypse. I mean, there are some characters, uh, but I think one of the characters that is uh, been very, very 
impactful is King. I, I, where, oh, I like to see where your yes. King is at. He's at six gold, six yellow. Not very close to that seventh one. But yeah, as soon as I get that seventh gold star in him, I'm, I'm looking for him in that store because I want that seven red. He makes impact every day in arena. Yeah. And obviously, you know, working for that big Kang bang and, and facing the Wakandans in Cosmic Crucible is uh, one of my most fun things. Kang's a little different impact for you, though, right? Well, it, it, this mine is very similar, and I and uh, he probably one of the first characters I take to gear tier eighteen because mm. uh, I, I I think he's impactful in every game mode, and also is his passive on offense will allow him to be useful for a very long time, uh, where they basically on offense fill speed bar for five percent for self and all allies. The very first line there at the top, uh, that will be something that will be good for a long time because this is a turn-based game uh turn mater is king who goes first is king and i i, I mean cable has been i mean you use cable every once in a while right There's i, use, always I like, use cable every once my level 60 cable makes an impact every once in a while yeah just just that that first line <laughs> right there at the top now never mind that he does a ton of damage and he does a lot of other things right but yeah you know power creep is a thing and uh you know a year from now let's say you know you know king is going to be power corrupt and he's not going to be like the the damage beast that he is today it's not going to matter he still has that first line right that first yes. line will still be impactful the same way to a lesser extent that cable has been useful for all of these years like a better version of emma i mean this this ultimate is not this needs that either with this uh, attacking all these enemies and then it's unblockable they stay dead they can't be revived i think that's gonna have a place in the game for a long time as well yeah all right so mobile the other character i want to talk about is val now i am building this character for the raids you know even without the rest of the biofrost team i think val still is gonna have an impact trying to get to that level that really i've seen other people use at higher levels with some success yeah. without the rest of the bifrost but mine isn't quite there yet so i'm building valve for the raids but what value do you think this character is going to have in dark dimension so my understanding is that val is a no-brainer for uh, the raids massive amount of damage and a revive and if you're able to use uh the exposed mechanic correctly uh should help with the cooldowns because mm. Val has very large cooldowns, and uh, the best way to mitigate that is to optimize it with with exposed mechanic. I personally have not been able to use Val inside of the raids because I'm doing 1.6, okay. and Val just gets deleted. Double gambits are not a joke. Oh, I mean, it's just like yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I don't know how to explain this, but 1.6 is significantly harder than 1.5, yeah. and. Uh, like characters that are not at 95 just struggle and, and i'm not sure how effective val's gonna be at three stars you know level 90 and so i have not been able to use val at all inside of raids but dark dimension 6 is something i'm highly interested in. and the footage that i've seen of dark dimension 6 has made very good use of val so what we used to do is look at blitz teams and see where our blitz teams are. Is that, is that something even important now? Blitz teams? What's a blitz team? I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> well, I want to talk about my Cosmic Crucible teams uh, because blitz, uh, you just have to play it. I mean, sometimes you don't even have to win it a lot. So, um, yeah, so this is what I have on defense. I'm about to switch them up, though. I've been very disappointed in my past few weeks. Went very, very close matchups every single time that I was away. So even without the help from the Valley Club, we, we most of our matchups, except for the final one, was within 10 points. And there was a lot decided by one point either way. But yeah, so I'm about to switch these up. Gamma on defense, Infinity Watch. We got some combo here with the Eternals and Quicksilver here. That's been yeah. pretty good. The standard team of the Wakandans. Yeah. We have uh, Nova here. And then we in with the dark hold, and then Zemo with the rebirth to trick a few people up. It's been, yeah, it's I, been okay, but uh, I think I'm looking for something I, I a little more I'm, effective. I think I'm running almost an identical team, uh, you know, uh, in every place. I think I run Apocalypse instead of Nova, and mm. then I have Infinity Watch and Gamma swapped around in rooms one and two. And I think that's the problem with Cosmic Crucible. And, and we're talking about the changes that they're going to make. They're talking about season four. Uh, having allowing 
more agency and that you know they won't have as prescriptive room bonuses like yes. i feel like rooms three rooms four room six are are especially bad you know you're pretty much boxed <laughs> into putting those teams and you know i i i was able to see what they were planning of course nothing has been finalized they were just looking at feedback and yes. um and and the best way that i can describe the rooms that i saw is that they were more like room five but nothing is set in stone does that does that make yeah. sense i mean they were more it was more in the not this bottom part but the top part like it the was more part. it was more in the flavor of like all right this cool thing's gonna happen in this room you guys go figure out what's best and I nice like time. that. I like that. That's that's something that's been missing since I guess Apocalypse was announced in this game, and now, now right. it feels like it's coming back. You know, we used to use Blitz for that mode. Now we use Cosmic Crucible for that mode. So I'm excited, and I guess that's a perfect segue into some of these changes that were announced. Mobile gamer, slower characters, and more reward rework. So you know they they were doing four per month. Now they're going to go back to three, which has been the historical average. I think that is good. What is your take on this? Is is some of these changes that they've announced, and we'll get to what each of them one by one. Is it is it too late for them to turn around the players and bring players back, or or is Marvel Strike Force just going to grow and get better from here with the players' voice, the council interacting with Scopely and all that stuff? Okay, I mean, uh, here's the thing. I mean, uh, I'm very sensitive to the numbers of uh, the community and how big the game is and how well the game, whether that is on Twitch viewership or YouTube views. You know, I, I definitely personally experience if there is a downtrend in the game. Now, there have been larger factors that have impacted the overall numbers and let's say the profit for, for Marvel Strike Force just being mm -hmm. COVID, right? You know, yeah. COVID... They had a captive audience and they were able to uh, greatly profit from, you know, everybody being at home. And I feel like in that time period, they had a very uh, arrogant stance where it almost felt like we're just numbers. We don't care about the players. You guys complain about everything. And uh, we know what we're doing. The numbers reflect that we're making a lot of money and you guys just can complain to complain and they can do all of these uh, horrible things. Now, there is something called a trust thermocline, and I'm gonna give you an image so that you can throw on the screen in editing right here, but I'm gonna show it right now. The, the trust thermocline uh, basically is this uh, idea of that as you dive into the ocean, um, it, the, the water temperature stays relatively level, but then when you hit a certain depth, the, the temperature just falls off a cliff. And this concept of a trust thermocline is that oftentimes uh, developers and manufacturers who treat their customers poorly often will justify it because the numbers don't drop initially. But mm. what happens is the customers get tired of it and the thrust, uh, the trust thermocline is purged and numbers fall off of a cliff and it's too late. Like they, they react and they're the re and this is something that has been happening across multiple businesses. And this is an economic principle called the thus, the trust thermocline. And I'm not sure if that has happened. It feels like numbers fell off a cliff and then they're reacting now. And yes. according to this principle of the trust thermocline, it is too late. Oh, that's 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 unfortunate because I do like a lot of these changes and I, I so kind of I. feel feel the numbers as well. I, I know what you're talking about because I'm very aware of what YouTube numbers are and Twitch numbers are. The goal, this has been something we've been asking for for a while. They're addressing it now. They already did with the war rewards, but now they're going to give more and strike pass both the free and the premium. I like that they're addressing the free or login characters as well. More theory crafting. We've been asking for this for so long. I'm glad they're reacting to this yes. now, but I, I hope it's not too late because I do like what you, what we were talking about. The change of the Cosmic Crucible. Significant change of the Cosmic Crucible round four. And they've already shared some of the, the players' council. I guess I guess with the, the, the envoys as well, but I was about way so I think it wasn't. Right. I'm not so, sure what's going on with so all that. So, yeah. From my, my point of view is that all of these changes are good and long overdue. 
And, and, and really, it's more of a hindsight's 2020. What if they yeah. would have been pro more proactive with these type of concerns? Because these concerns were brought up a year ago. These concerns were brought up Some 18 it, months two ago. Two years ago. Yeah. It's two years ago. And it, largely, they were ignored until now. And so there's two issues. One, uh, uh, is it gonna? Is it too late? And secondly, I think there's a lot of skepticism on whether or not they're going to follow through with what they're saying here. Uh, I am 1000% optimistic about this process. I feel like the, the players council is, is for the good. Uh, we are getting direct interaction with the developers. They are listening to feedback. And so far, the changes have been a step in the right direction. I think it's reasonable and fair to be skeptical 100% about all of this. But I have not been optimistic about other movements in the past like mm. I am about this one here. No, the, the devs are addressing it. They never address any movements in the past. The same right. MSF and players MSF. They have something now. And it's a. it looks like it's a permanent thing from the last sentence here. Yes. Along with these non-hoarding events. Types of a regular meeting cadence with the players council and that is representative not just the ultra krakens the players there's also players that just spend some money players that spend a little bit and then there's free to play players as well so all areas of the community are hurt and i guess this is a very good thing but the big question is if this is too little too late because if you just look at the trust or climb, climb it, it it looks like that but the question is are they going to be able to bring in new players is a new player experience good enough that they're going to be able to bring in players Get them to stick around long term to make this a game that it, it was back in 2020. You know, is, is is are they doing a good enough job with that? And is that new player experience good enough for these new players to stick around? All right. So to me, the short answer is not really. Uh, but, but there's something interesting with mobile games. And you know that I this is all I do is cover mobile games. And I have some experience since 2015 in covering and playing mobile games. And the, the reality of the mobile gaming industry is that the games that are established that are winners like Marvel Strike Force, Galaxy of Heroes, Rage Shadow Legends, Clash Royale, Candy Crush, and so on, they are the ones that are making the money today in 2013 and they're growing. And yes, there are some new games that are coming to market that are doing well, like you know uh, the, the Genshin Impacts and the Star Rail, but largely, it's hard to break into the mobile gaming market, and the established players are the ones making the monies. And Marvel Strike Force is in that category. But are they getting new customers? No, it's it's a slow burn. And, and I perf I, I one thousand percent expect this game to continue to go on for a long time, the same way that Star Wars: Galaxy of Heroes has. It's not going anywhere. But this idea that it's going to grow and go back to where it was in 2020 absolutely not i don't see that happening gotcha gotcha and i uh you know unfortunately i do agree with you you know as someone that has discovered a game that would want to see this game have those numbers and that reach that it did back in 2020 unfortunately i do think you're right it's a, but it's a slow let decline us know. slow decline it's 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 not <laughs> growing that's for sure let us know your thoughts in the comments. Are we right in this? Are we wrong in this? Do you have some divergent? But do you agree with what he had to say? Uh, and let me know what is you what are you doing with your roster? Are you building for Cosmic Crucible raids, arena, or something else? We're gonna go check out Mobile Gamers video uh, roster on his channel, and we're gonna talk about something very very interesting. I don't know if we've decided what we're gonna talk about, but it's gonna be a different topic. I will see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Are you ready for a hog fist bump, Mobile Gamer? Let's go! Let's go! Hog fist bump, Valley Fly, and Mobile Gamer out!